Halloween. Halloween or Halloween also known as All Hallows Eve, is a yearly celebration observed in a number of countries on October 31st, the eve of the Western Christian Feast of All Hallows Day. It initiates the Triduum of Hallowtide, the time in the liturgical year dedicated to remembering the dead, including saints, martyrs, and all the faithful departed believers. According to many academic scholars, All Hallows Eve is a Christianized feast initially influenced by Celtic harvest festivals, with possible pagan roots, particularly the Gaelic Samhain. Other academic scholars maintain that it originated independently of Samhain and has solely Christian roots. Typical festive Halloween activities include trick or treating, or the related guising, attending costume parties, decorating, carving pumpkins into jack o' lanterns, lighting bonfires, apple bobbing, visiting haunted house attractions, playing pranks, telling scary stories, and watching horror films. Because many Western Christian denominations encourage, although no longer require, abstinence from meat on All Hallows' Eve, the tradition of eating certain vegetarian foods for this vigil day developed, including the consumption of apples, coal cannon, cider, potato pancakes, and soul cakes. Etymology The word Halloween or Halloween dates to about 1745 and is of Christian origin. The word Halloween means hallowed evening, or holy evening. It comes from a Scottish term for All Hallows' Eve, the evening before All Hallows' Day. In Scots, the word Eve is even, and this is contracted to een or een. Over time, all, hallow, s, eve, n, evolved into Halloween. Although the phrase All Hallows is found in Old English, Eva Halgina Mass Day, Mass Day of All Saints, All Hallows' Eve is itself not seen until 1556. History Gaelic and Welsh influence Today's Halloween customs are thought to have been influenced by folk customs and beliefs from the Celtic-speaking countries, some of which have pagan roots, and others which may be rooted in Celtic Christianity. Indeed, Jack Santino, an academic folklorist, writes that the sacred and the religious are a fundamental context for understanding Halloween in Northern Ireland, but there is throughout Ireland an uneasy truce exists between customs and beliefs associated with Christianity and those associated with religions that were Irish before Christianity arrived. Historian Nicholas Rogers, exploring the origins of Halloween, notes that while some folklorists have detected its origins in the Roman feast of Pomona, the goddess of fruits and seeds, or in the festival of the dead called Parentalia, it is more typically linked to the Celtic festival of Samhain which comes from the Old Irish for summer's end. Samhain, pronounced S-A-H win or S-O-W-N, was the first and most important of the four quarter days in the medieval Gaelic calendar and was celebrated in Ireland, Scotland and the Isle of Man. It was held on or about October 1, 31 November and kindred festivals were held at the same time of year by the Britonic Celts. For example Calan Gaeaf, in Wales, Calan Gwov, in Cornwall, and Callan Goanb, in Brittany. Samhain and Callan Gaeaf are mentioned in some of the earliest Irish and Welsh literature. The names have been used by historians to refer to Celtic Halloween customs up until the 19th century, and are still the Gaelic and Welsh names for Halloween. Samhain and Callan Gaeaf marked the end of the harvest season and beginning of winter or the darker half of the year. Like Beltane Callan Mai, it was seen as a liminal time when the spirits or fairies, the Ossi, could more easily come into our world and were particularly active. Most scholars see the Ossi as degraded versions of ancient gods whose power remained active in the people's minds even after they had been officially replaced by later religious beliefs. The Ossi were both respected and feared, with individuals often invoking the protection of God when approaching their dwellings. At Samhain, it was believed that the Ossi needed to be propitiated to ensure that the people and their livestock survived the winter. Offerings of food and drink, or portions of the crops, were left for the Ossi. The souls of the dead were also said to revisit their homes. Places were set at the dinner table or by the fire to welcome them. The belief that the souls of the dead return home on one night or day of the year seems to have ancient origins and is found in many cultures throughout the world. 
In 19th century Ireland, candles would be lit and prayers formally offered for the souls of the dead. After this the eating, drinking, and games would begin. Throughout the Gaelic and Welsh regions, the household festivities included rituals and games intended to divine one's future, especially regarding death and marriage. Nuts and apples were often used in these divination rituals. Special bonfires were lit and there were rituals involving them. Their flames, smoke and ashes were deemed to have protective and cleansing powers, and were also used for divination. It is suggested that the fires were a kind of imitative or sympathetic magic, they mimicked the sun, helping the powers of growth, and holding back the decay and darkness of winter. Christian minister Eddie J. Smith suggests that the bonfires were also used to scare witches of their awaiting punishment in hell. In modern Ireland, Scotland, Man and Wales, the festival included mumming and guising, the latter of which goes back at least as far as the 16th century. This involved people going house to house in costume, or in disguise, usually reciting verses or songs in exchange for food. It may have come from the Christian custom of souling, see below, or it may have a Gaelic folk origin, with the costumes being a means of imitating, or disguising oneself from, the Ossi. In Scotland, youths went house to house on October 31st with masked, painted or blackened faces, often threatening to do mischief if they were not welcomed. F. Marion McNeil suggests the ancient festival included people in costume representing the spirits, and that faces were marked or blackened, with ashes taken from the sacred bonfire. In parts of Wales, men went about dressed as fearsome beings called Grod. In the late 19th and early 20th century, young people in Glamorgan and Orkney dressed as the opposite gender. In parts of Southern Ireland, the geysers included a hobby horse. A man dressed as a laban, white mare, led youths house to house reciting verses, some of which had pagan overtones in exchange for food. If the household donated food it could expect good fortune from the Marcola. Not doing so would bring misfortune. Elsewhere in Europe, mumming and hobby horses were part of other yearly festivals. However, in the Celtic-speaking regions they were particularly appropriate to a night upon which supernatural beings were said to be abroad and could be imitated or warded off by human wanderers. As early as the 18th century, Imitating malignant spirits led to playing pranks in Ireland and the Scottish Highlands. Wearing costumes at Halloween spread to England in the 20th century, as did the custom of playing pranks. The traditional illumination for geysers or pranksters abroad on the night in some places was provided by turnips or mangel wurzels, hollowed out to act as lanterns and often carved with grotesque faces to represent spirits or goblins. These were common in parts of Ireland in the Scottish Highlands in 19th century, as well as in Somerset, see Punky Night. In the 20th century they spread to other parts of England and became generally known as jack-o'-lanterns. Christian influence Today's Halloween customs are also thought to have been influenced by Christian dogma and practices derived from it. Halloween falls on the evening before the Christian holy days of All Hallows Day, also known as All Saints, Hallamas or Hallowtide, on November 1st and All Souls Day on November 2nd, thus giving the holiday on October 31st the full name of All Hallows Eve, meaning the evening before All Hallows Day. Since the time of the primitive church, major feasts in the Christian church, such as Christmas, Easter and Pentecost, had vigils which began the night before, as did the Feast of All Hallows. These three days are collectively referred to as Hallowtide and are a time for honoring the saints and praying for the recently departed souls who have yet to reach heaven. All Saints was introduced in the year 609, but was originally celebrated on May 13. In 835, it was switched to November 1, the same date as Samhain, at the behest of Pope Gregory IV. Some suggest this was due to Celtic influence, while others suggest it was a Germanic idea. It is also suggested that the change was made on the practical grounds that Rome in summer could not accommodate the great number of pilgrims who flocked to it, and perhaps because of public health considerations regarding Roman fever, a disease that claimed a number of lives during the sultry summers of the region. 
by the end of the 12th century they had become holy days of obligation across Europe and involved such traditions as ringing church bells for the souls in purgatory. In addition, it was customary for criers dressed in black to parade the streets, ringing a bell of mournful sound and calling on all good Christians to remember the poor souls. Souling, the custom of baking and sharing soul cakes for all christened souls, has been suggested as the origin of trick or treating. The custom dates back at least as far as the 15th century and was found in parts of England, Belgium, Germany, Austria and Italy. Groups of poor people, often children, would go door to door during Hallowtide, collecting soul cakes as a means of praying for souls in purgatory. Shakespeare mentions the practice in his comedy The Two Gentlemen of Verona, 1593. The custom of wearing costumes has been explicated by Prince Surikanti, who wrote, It was traditionally believed that the souls of the departed wandered the earth until All Saints' Day, and All Hallows' Eve provided one last chance for the dead to gain vengeance on their enemies before moving to the next world. In order to avoid being recognized by any soul that might be seeking such vengeance, people would don masks or costumes to disguise their identities. In the Middle Ages, Churches displayed the relics of martyred saints and those parishes that were too poor to have relics let parishioners dress up as the saints instead, a practice that some Christians continue in Halloween celebrations today. Academic folklorist Kingsley Palmer, in addition to others, has suggested that the carved jack-o'-lantern, a popular symbol of Halloween, originally represented the souls of the dead. On Halloween, in medieval Europe, Fires lit to guide these souls on their way and deflect them from haunting honest Christian folk. In addition, households in Austria, England, Ireland often had candles burning in every room to guide the souls back to visit their earthly homes. These were known as soul lights. Many Christians in continental Europe, especially in France, acknowledged a belief that once a year, on Halloween, the dead of the churchyards rose for one wild, hideous carnival known as the Dawn's Macabre, which has been commonly depicted in church decoration, especially on the walls of cathedrals, monasteries, and cemeteries. Christopher Olmond and Roy Salmond McKittrick write in the New Cambridge Medieval History that Christians were moved by the sight of the infant Jesus playing on his mother's knee. Their hearts were touched by the Pieta, and patron saints reassured them by their presence. But, all the while, the Dawn's Macabre urged them not to forget the end of all earthly things. This Dawn's Macabre, which was enacted by Christian village children celebrated the vigil of all saints in the 16th century, has been suggested as the predecessor of modern-day costume parties on this same day. In parts of Britain, these customs came under attack during the Reformation as some Protestants berated purgatory as a popish doctrine incompatible with a notion of predestination. Thus, for some nonconformist Protestants, the theology of All Hallows' Eve was redefined. Without the doctrine of purgatory, the returning souls cannot be journeying from purgatory on their way to heaven, as Catholics frequently believe and assert. Instead, the so-called ghosts are thought to be in actuality evil spirits. As such they are threatening. Other Protestants maintained belief in an intermediate state, known as Hades, bosom of Abraham, and continued to observe the original customs, especially candlelit processions and the ringing of church bells in memory of the dead. With regard to the evil spirits, on Halloween, barns and homes were blessed to protect people and livestock from the effect of witches, who were believed to accompany the malignant spirits as they traveled the earth. In the 19th century, in some rural parts of England, families gathered on hills on the night of All Hallows' Eve. One held a bunch of burning straw on a pitchfork while the rest knelt around him in a circle, praying for the souls of relatives and friends until the flames went out. This was known as teen lay, derived either from the Old English tendon, meaning to kindle, or a word related to Old Irish tenlark, meaning half. The rising popularity of Guy Fawkes Night, November 5, from 1605 onward, saw many Halloween traditions appropriated by that holiday instead and Halloween's popularity waned in Britain, with the noteworthy exception of Scotland. There and in Ireland, they had been celebrating Samhain and Halloween since at least the early Middle Ages, and the Scottish Kirk took a more pragmatic approach to Halloween, 
seeing it as important to the life cycle and rites of passage of communities and thus ensuring its survival in the country. In France, some Christian families, on the night of All Hallows' Eve, prayed beside the graves of their loved ones, setting down dishes full of milk for them. On Halloween, in Italy, some families left a large meal out for ghosts of their past relatives, before they departed for church services. In Spain, on this night, special pastries are baked, known as bones of the holy, Spanish, huesos de santo, and put them on the graves of the churchyard, a practice that continues to this day. Spread to North America Leslie Bannatyne and Cindy Ott both write that Anglican colonists in the South and Catholic colonists in Maryland recognized All Hallows' Eve in their church calendars, although the Puritans of New England maintained strong opposition to the holiday, in addition to other traditional celebrations of the established church, including Christmas. Mass Irish and Scottish immigration during the 19th century increased the holiday's celebration in the United States. Confined to the immigrant communities during the mid-19th century, it was gradually assimilated into mainstream society and by the first decade of the 20th century it was being celebrated coast to coast by people of all social, racial and religious backgrounds. Symbols Development of artifacts and symbols associated with Halloween formed over time. Jack-o'-lanterns are traditionally carried by geysers on All Hallows' Eve in order to frighten evil spirits. There is a popular Irish Christian folktale associated with a jack-o'-lantern, which in law, is said to represent a soul who has been denied entry into both heaven and hell. In Ireland and Scotland, the turnip has traditionally been carved during Halloween, but immigrants to North America used the native pumpkin, which is both much softer and much larger, making it easier to carve than a turnip. Subsequently, the mass marketing of various size pumpkins in autumn, in both the corporate and local markets, has made pumpkins universally available for this purpose. The American tradition of carving pumpkins is recorded in 1837 and was originally associated with harvest time in general, not becoming specifically associated with Halloween until the mid to late 19th century. The modern imagery of Halloween comes from many sources, including Christian eschatology, national customs, works of Gothic and horror literature, such as the novels Frankenstein and Dracula, and classic horror films, such as Frankenstein and the Mummy. Imagery of the skull, a reference to Golgotha, in the Christian tradition, serves as a reminder of death and the transitory quality of human life, and is consequently found in Memento Mori and Vanitas compositions. Skulls have therefore been commonplace in Halloween, which touches on this theme. Traditionally, the back walls of churches are decorated with a depiction of the Last Judgment, complete with graves opening and the dead rising, with a heaven filled with angels and a hell filled with devils, a motif that has permeated the observance of this triduum. One of the earliest works on the subject of Halloween is from Scottish poet John Main, who, in 1780, made note of pranks at Halloween. What fearful pranks ensue? as well as the supernatural associated with the night, bogies, ghosts, influencing Robert Burns' Halloween, 1785. Elements of the autumn season, such as pumpkins, corn husks and scarecrows, are also prevalent. Homes are often decorated with these types of symbols around Halloween. Halloween imagery includes themes of death, evil, and mythical monsters. Black, orange and sometimes purple are Halloween's traditional colors. Trick or Treating and Guising Trick or treating is a customary celebration for children on Halloween. Children go in costume from house to house, asking for treats such as candy or sometimes money, with the question, trick or treat? The word trick refers to threat to perform mischief on the homeowners or their property if no treat is given. The practice is said to have roots in the medieval practice of mumming, which is closely related to souling, discussed above. John Pym writes that many of the feast days associated with the presentation of mumming plays were celebrated by the Christian Church. These feast days included All Hallows' Eve, Christmas, Twelfth Night and Shrove Tuesday. Mumming, practiced in Germany, Scandinavia and other parts of Europe, involved masked persons in fancy dress who paraded the streets and entered houses to dance or play dice in silence. 
Their basic narrative framework is the story of St. George and the Seven Champions of Christendom. In Scotland and Ireland, guising, children disguised in costume going from door to door for food or coins, is a traditional Halloween custom, and is recorded in Scotland at Halloween in 1895 where masqueraders in disguise carrying lanterns made out of scooped up turnips, visit homes to be rewarded with cakes, fruit and money. The practice of guising at Halloween in North America is first recorded in 1911, where a newspaper in Kingston, Ontario reported children going guising around the neighborhood. American historian and author Ruth Edna Kelly of Massachusetts wrote the first book-length history of Halloween in the U.S. The Book of Halloween, 1919, and references Soling in the chapter Halloween in America. In her book, Kelly touches on customs that arrived from across the Atlantic. Americans have fostered them, and are making this an occasion something like what it must have been in its best days overseas. All Halloween customs in the United States are borrowed directly or adapted from those of other countries. While the first reference to guising in North America occurs in 1911, another reference to ritual begging on Halloween appears, place unknown, in 1915, with a third reference in Chicago in 1920. The earliest known use in print of the term trick or treat appears in 1927, from Blackie, Alberta, Canada. The thousands of Halloween postcards produced between the turn of the 20th century and the 1920s commonly show children but not trick-or-treating. The editor of a collection of over 3,000 vintage Halloween postcards writes, There are cards which mention the custom or show children in costumes at the doors, but as far as we can tell they were printed later than the 1920s and more than likely even the 1930s. Tricksters of various sorts are shown on the early postcards, but not the means of appeasing them. Trick or treating does not seem to have become a widespread practice until the 1930s, with the first U.S. appearances of the term in 1934, and the first use in a national publication occurring in 1939. A popular variant of trick or treating, known as trunk or treating, or Halloween tailgating, occurs when children are offered treats from the trunks of cars parked in a church parking lot, or sometimes, a school parking lot. In a trunk will treat event, the trunk, boot, of each automobile is decorated with a certain theme, such as those of children's literature, movies, scripture, and job roles. Because the traditional style of trick or treating was made impossible after Hurricane Katrina, trunk or treating provided comfort to those whose homes were devastated. Trunk or treating has grown in popularity due to its perception as being more safe than going door to door a point that resonates well with parents, as well as the fact that it solves the rural conundrum in which homes built a half-mile apart. Costumes Halloween costumes are traditionally modeled after supernatural figures such as vampires, monsters, ghosts, skeletons, witches, and devils. Over time, in the United States the costume selection extended to include popular characters from fiction, celebrities, and generic archetypes such as ninjas and princesses. Dressing up in costumes and going guising was prevalent in Ireland and Scotland at Halloween by the late 19th century. Costuming became popular for Halloween parties in the U.S. in the early 20th century, as often for adults as for children. The first mass-produced Halloween costumes appeared in stores in the 1930s when trick-or-treating was becoming popular in the United States. Rev. Dr. Eddie J. Smith in his book Halloween, Hallowed Be Thy Name, offers a religious perspective to the wearing of costumes on All Hallows' Eve, suggesting that by dressing up as creatures, who at one time caused us to fear and tremble, people are able to poke fun at Satan, whose kingdom has been plundered by our Savior. Images of skeletons and the dead are traditional decorations used as memento mori. UNICEF Trick or Treat for UNICEF is a fundraising program to support UNICEF, a United Nations program that provides humanitarian aid to children in developing countries. Started as a local event in a northeast Philadelphia neighborhood in 1950 and expanded nationally in 1952, the program involves the distribution of small boxes by schools, or in modern times, corporate sponsors like Hallmark, at their licensed stores, to trick or treaters 
in which they can solicit small change donations from the houses they visit. It is estimated that children have collected more than $118 million for UNICEF since its inception. In Canada, in 2006, UNICEF decided to discontinue the Halloween collection boxes, citing safety and administrative concerns. After consultation with schools, they instead redesigned the program. Games and other activities there are several games traditionally associated with Halloween parties. One common game is dunking or apple bobbing, which may be called duking in Scotland in which apples float in a tub or a large basin of water and the participants must use their teeth to remove an apple from the basin. The practice is thought by some to have derived from the Roman practices in celebration of Pomona. A variant of dunking involves kneeling on a chair, holding a fork between the teeth and trying to drive the fork into an apple. Another common game involves hanging up treacle or syrup-coated scones by strings. These must be eaten without using hands while they remain attached to the string, an activity that inevitably leads to a very sticky face. Some games traditionally played at Halloween are forms of divination. In All Hallows' Eve celebrations during the Middle Ages, these activities historically occurred only in rural areas of medieval Europe and were only done by a rare few as these were considered to be deadly serious practices. A traditional Scottish form of divining one's future spouse is to carve an apple in one long strip, then toss the peel over one's shoulder. The peel is believed to land in the shape of the first letter of the future spouse's name. Unmarried women were told that if they sat in a darkened room and gazed into a mirror on Halloween night, the face of their future husband would appear in the mirror. However, if they were destined to die before marriage, a skull would appear. The custom was widespread enough to be commemorated on greeting cards from the late 19th century and early 20th century. Another game superstition that was enjoyed in the early 1900s involved walnut shells. People would write fortunes in milk on white paper. After drying, the paper was folded and placed in walnut shells. When the shell was warmed, milk would turn brown therefore the writing would appear on what looked like blank paper. Folks would also play fortune teller. In order to play this game, symbols were cut out of paper and placed on a platter. Someone would enter a dark room and was ordered to put her hand on a piece of ice then lay it on a platter. Her fortune would stick to the hand. Paper symbols included, dollar sign wealth, button bachelorhood, thimble spinsterhood clothes pin poverty, rice wedding, umbrella journey, cauldron trouble, four leaf clover good luck, penny fortune, ring early marriage, and key fame. The telling of ghost stories and viewing of horror films are common fixtures of Halloween parties. Episodes of television series and Halloween themed specials, with the specials usually aimed at children, are commonly aired on or before Halloween while new horror films are often released theatrically before Halloween to take advantage of the atmosphere. Haunted Attractions Haunted attractions are entertainment venues designed to thrill and scare patrons. Most attractions are seasonal Halloween businesses. Origins of these paid scare venues are difficult to pinpoint, but it is generally accepted that they were first commonly used by the Junior Chamber International JSAs, for fundraising. They include haunted houses, corn mazes, and hair rides, and the level of sophistication of the effects has risen as the industry has grown. Haunted attractions in the United States bring in an estimate million dollars each year, and draw some 400,000 customers, although press sources writing in 2005 speculated that the industry had reached its peak at that time. This maturing and growth within the industry has led to technically more advanced special effects and costuming comparable with that of Hollywood films. Food Because in the Northern Hemisphere Halloween comes in the wake of the yearly apple harvest, candy apples, known as toffee apples outside North America, caramel or taffy apples are common Halloween treats made by rolling whole apples in a sticky sugar syrup, sometimes followed by rolling them in nuts. At one time, candy apples were commonly given to trick or treating children, but the practice rapidly waned in the wake of widespread rumors that some individuals were embedding items like pins and razor blades in the apples in the United States. While there is evidence of such incidents, relative to the degree of reporting of such cases, 
actual cases involving malicious acts are extremely rare and have never resulted in serious injury. Nonetheless, many parents assumed that such heinous practices were rampant because of the mass media. At the peak of the hysteria, some hospitals offered free X-rays of children's Halloween halls in order to find evidence of tampering. Virtually all of the few known candy poisoning incidents involved parents who poisoned their own children's candy. One custom that persists in modern-day Ireland is the baking, or more often nowadays, the purchase, of a balm brack, Irish, bear and break, which is a light fruit cake, into which a plain ring, a coin and other charms are placed before baking. It is said that those who get a ring will find their true love in the ensuing year. This is similar to the tradition of king cake at the festival of Epiphany. List of foods associated with Halloween. Balm brack, Ireland. Bonfire toffee, Great Britain. Candy apples toffee apples, Great Britain and Ireland. Candy apples, candy corn, candy pumpkins, North America. Monkey nuts, peanuts in their shells, Scotland and Ireland. Caramel apples, caramel corn, colcannon, Ireland. See below, novelty candy shaped like skulls, pumpkins, bats, worms, etc. Pumpkin, pumpkin pie, pumpkin bread, roasted pumpkin seeds, roasted sweet corn, soul cakes. Religious observances On Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, in Poland, believers are taught to pray out loud as they walk through the forests in order that the souls of the dead might find comfort. In Spain, Christian priests toll their church bells in order to remind their congregants to remember the dead on All Hallows' Eve. In Ireland, and among immigrants in Canada, a custom includes the Christian practice of abstinence, keeping All Hallows' Eve as a meatless day with pancakes or cold cannon being served instead. In Mexico, on All Hallows' Eve, the children make a children's altar to invite the angelitos, spirits of dead children, to come back for a visit. The Christian Church traditionally observed Halloween through a vigil, when worshippers would prepare themselves with prayers and fasting prior to the feast day itself. This church service is known as the Vigil of All Hallows or the Vigil of All Saints. An initiative known as Night of Light seeks to further spread the Vigil of All Hallows throughout Christendom. After the service, suitable festivities and entertainments often follow, as well as a visit to the graveyard or cemetery where flowers and candles are often placed in preparation for All Hallows' Day. In Finland, because so many people visit the cemeteries on All Hallows' Eve to light votive candles there, they are known as Valimeri, or Seas of Light. Perspectives Christianity Christian attitudes towards Halloween are diverse. In the Anglican Church, some dioceses have chosen to emphasize the Christian traditions associated with All Hallows' Eve. Some of these practices include praying, fasting and attending worship services. Other Protestant Christians also celebrate All Hallows' Eve as Reformation Day, a day to remember the Protestant Reformation, alongside All Hallows' Eve or independently from it. This is because Martin Luther nailed his 95 Theses to All Saints Church in Wittenberg on All Hallows' Eve because hundreds of visitors would come to the church during the celebration of Hallowtide. Often, harvest festivals, or Reformation festivals are held on All Hallows' Eve, in which children dress up as Bible characters or reformers. In addition to distributing candy to children who are trick-or-treating on Halloween, many Christians also provide gospel tracts to them. One organization, the American Tract Society, stated that around three million gospel tracts are ordered from them alone for Halloween celebrations. Others order Halloween-themed scripture candy to pass out to children in this day. Some Christians feel concerned about the modern celebration of Halloween because they feel it trivializes, or celebrates, paganism, the occult, or other practices and cultural phenomena deemed incompatible with their beliefs. Further Gabriella Morth, an exorcist in Rome, has said, if English and American children like to dress up as witches and devils on one night of the year that is not a problem. If it is just a game, there is no harm in that. In more recent years, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Boston has organized a saint fest on Halloween. Similarly, many contemporary Protestant churches view Halloween as a fun event for children, 
holding events in their churches where children and their parents can dress up, play games, and get candy for free. Many Christians ascribe no negative significance to Halloween, treating it as a fun event devoted to imaginary spooks, and handing out candy. To these Christians, Halloween holds no threat to the spiritual lives of children, being taught about death and mortality, and the ways of the Celtic ancestors actually being a valuable life lesson and a part of many of their parishioners' heritage. In the Roman Catholic Church, Halloween's Christian connection is cited, and Halloween celebrations are common in Catholic parochial schools throughout North America and in Ireland. Many fundamentalist and evangelical churches use hell houses, themed pamphlets, or comic-style tracts such as those created by Jack T. Chick in order to make use of Halloween's popularity as an opportunity for evangelism. Some consider Halloween to be completely incompatible with the Christian faith due to its putative origins in the Festival of the Dead celebration. Indeed, even though Eastern Orthodox Christians observe All Hallows' Day on the first Sunday after Pentecost, the Eastern Orthodox Church recommends the observance of Vespers and or a paraclesis on the Western observance of All Hallows' Eve, out of the pastoral need to provide an alternative to popular celebrations. Other religions The reaction of non-Christian religions towards Halloween has often been mixed, ranging from stern disapproval to the allowance of participation in it. According to Alfred J. Kalach in the Second Jewish Book of Why, in Judaism, Halloween is not permitted by Jewish halakha because it violates Leviticus 18.3 which forbids Jews from partaking in Gentile customs. Many Jews observe Iskoh, which is equivalent to the observance of Hallowtide in Christianity, as prayers are said for both martyrs and for one's own family. Nevertheless many American Jews celebrate Halloween, disconnected from its Christian origins. Reform Rabbi Jeffrey Goldwasser has said that there is no religious reason why contemporary Jews should not celebrate Halloween while Orthodox Rabbi Michael Broid has argued against Jews observing the holiday. Sheikh Idris Palmer, author of A Brief Illustrated Guide to Understanding Islam, has argued that Muslims should not participate in Halloween, stating that participation in it is similar to one commemorating Christmas or Easter, or congratulating the Christians upon their prostration to the crucifix. Javed Memon, a Muslim writer, has disagreed, saying that his daughter dressing up like a British telephone booth will not destroy her faith. Most Hindus do not observe All Hallows' Eve, instead remembering the dead in the festival of Pichru Pakshaw, during which Hindus pay homage to and perform a ceremony to keep the souls of their ancestors at rest. The celebration of the Hindu festival Diwali sometimes conflicts with the date of Halloween but some Hindus choose to participate in the popular customs of Halloween. Other Hindus, such as Sumya Dasgupta, have opposed the celebration on the grounds that Western holidays like Halloween have begun to adversely affect our indigenous festivals. Neo-pagans do not observe Halloween, but instead observe Samhain on November 1st, although some neo-pagan individuals choose to participate in cultural Halloween festivities, opining the idea that one can observe both the solemnity of Samhain in addition to the fun of Halloween. Other neo-pagans are opposed to the celebration of Halloween, believing that it trivializes Samhain, and avoid Halloween, because of the interruptions from trick-or-treaters. Around the world The traditions and importance of Halloween vary greatly among countries that observe it. In Scotland and Ireland, Traditional Halloween customs include children dressing up in costume going guising, holding parties, while other practices in Ireland include lighting bonfires, and having firework displays. In Brittany children would set candles in skulls in graveyards. Mass transatlantic immigration in the 19th century popularized Halloween in North America, and celebration in the United States and Canada has had a significant impact on how the event is observed in other nations. This large North American influence, particularly in iconic and commercial elements, has extended to places such as South America, Australia, New Zealand, most, continental Europe, Japan, and other parts of East Asia. In the Philippines, on the night of Halloween, Filipinos return to their hometowns and purchase candles and flowers, in preparation for the following All Saints Day and All Souls Day, Aurora Ng Pate, on November 1. Thousands of Wiccans, 
who follow ancient Celtic rituals, still call Halloween by the ancient name Samhain and consider it to be the most sacred night of the year. Christians don't realize it, but they're celebrating our holiday with us, we like it, stated the newspaper USA Today when quoting a professed wit.